I believe in me. I believe in me. I believe in you. I believe in you. Stand strong. You are powerful. Stand strong. You are inspiring. We are fighters. We are ambitious. We are extraordinary. We are conquerors. Simply, Simply Straight, straight talk, talk, our voices, voices will, will be heard. heard. This is Simply Straight Talk. Yeah. Tune in now, you don't want to miss out. Real conversation, plenty motivation. Uh -huh. Keep you thinking and still entertaining. Yeah, I know that you'll enjoy the Mido's free. Your voice is your choice. Hosted by Reggie B, but you already know. And you gotta check them out and how we roll. Hey, ain't nothing off the table. Give it to you straight. Changing your mindset, talking past mistakes. You ain't gotta wait, time to take off. This is Simply Straight Talk. I'm Melissa, and this is the Simply Straight Talk podcast, a podcast for the people. Reggie, Angelique, and I enjoy discussing real-life topics that we as real people who are constantly out here on a grind and hustle deal with every day. Stick around for the real talking tips that will help you rise above the rest. Let's start this show. What's up, Simply Straight Talk listeners? You are listening to the Simply Straight Talk podcast. Listen up, people. Today is going to be a two for one fur. A two for one fur. Okay, I know that's crazy, but got to throw something in there to make it a little interesting for you. But no, seriously, today is going to be a two for one. The first part of the show, we're going to talk about um, impatient behavior. And the second part of the show, we're going to talk about killer instincts. So it's kind of two topics. They can kind of be combined together. But remember, the purpose of this is just to give you something to think about, something to look at your life and see how can I use this information to be better, to progress, to be more successful. Because remember, you got to seek out positive things, a positive mindset, and you need positive information, things that are going to help you to grow. Yes, we all love our music and our movies. But you got to find things and how it's going to benefit you in your life and in what you're trying to do and accomplish. So to start off today's show, we're going to talk about impatient behavior. That's going to be our first topic. Show is still going to be the same length, but I just want to share this with you because I'm bringing this to you because I have seen just in my experience that a lot of people are really exhibiting impatient behavior. And it's in vast areas of life. It's just in different aspects of life. We're seeing it more and more. And we kind of talked about this before, that we now live in a society of microwave. You know, everybody wants things just like the dishes they put in the microwave. You know, they want everything two to five minutes. They put it in. It's ready. Let's eat it. We're done. I got it. Nobody wants the full process of actually just sort of understanding what it is that they are getting, what it is that they are actually eating. You know, the whole process of kind of building something, understanding something, how it fits into your life. Will it work? Will it won't work? Because everybody wants things ready made. And we talked about that before, you know, especially in relationships. You know, we're going to hit on that. We're going to hit on a little bit of a different area today. Because we're once again in the same situation of people just being impatient about things they want. Let's start off with jobs. And I see this a lot. I see a lot of people who are going to a new job. They're starting a new job. And their mindset is, I'm in this job. So everybody here needs to be my friend. You've only been here for a day and you're thinking that everybody needs to be your friend or they're so busy trying to fit in and be cool with everybody because they're trying to have some type of bond that they don't realize that you're here to work. You're here to get money, earn a paycheck. And if you don't need it, why are you here? Give that space to somebody who understands that they are here for a job. People want to grow faster than they need to. You know, I've seen people come to a job and automatically say, oh, yeah, I'm going to be do that. I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. I ain't worried about that. I'm going to do that. You know, and it's like it's your, literally your first day here and you're telling somebody that you're not worried about the fundamentals because you're going to be doing this. And of course, that person looks at you with a bit of bit of a, like a side eye, like, OK, the ego is real right now. 
People are so impatient. They want to grow. They want everything, but nobody wants the process to learn. And one thing in starting a new job is you got to understand something. No matter where you worked at before, if you're working at a new company, and it could be a same company that does the same things you did at your previous job, but this is a different place. They're going to have different rules, different policies. They're going to have different logistics ways of doing things. Their strategy may be different. So you have to open your mind and be willing to say, okay, I'm here. Let me just simply try to understand how this company operates. Because if you're trying to bring your old company attitude into a new company, you're going to find that you're running into conflict. And people are going to say that you're not a good fit because you're not adaptable. You're not flexible. Because you know everything. And some people think that people can't pick up on people who have the attitude of, yeah, 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 I already know this. I know everything. That means they can't teach you anything. So that means they quickly want to see you get through your prep, your whatever your period is for being there and out the door because they cannot work with you. You are somebody that people cannot work with. Another thing is people who are in a dire need for friends. Some people are so impatient that the first day they meet somebody, they're a friend. You have a conversation for five minutes and you assume they're a friend. You know, because you may have one or two things you talked about. You know, you talked about football. Oh, man, he's a great friend. Or they had the same relationship experience you had with somebody else. Oh, she's a good friend. And that's what people are tending to do. Friendships, you cannot be impatient with. A friend is somebody that you get to know, you get to understand, you understand their values, their morals, if they're in line with yours. And oftentimes people are so impatient because they, people want to connect. No matter who you are in life, you want to connect with somebody, some group, you want to connect. But people are very impatient about the process because they want the connection to be immediate. They want the connection to be right now. And when it doesn't happen, they don't know how to take it. They start to feel like everybody's against me. Everybody's rejecting me. Or the self-confidence takes a big hit. Or they start to lash out other people. Or there's something wrong with them. They don't like me. They got to click against me. No. It takes time to build a bond and people are so quick right now to want to build a bond overnight or in 20 minutes that they get in their feelings if it doesn't go their way. Another way that people really get into, you know, impatient behavior is in relationships. And I see this so much. It's like people, I don't know why people are, are not willing to just embrace the process. A lot of people are in the mindset of, I simply want this to be a relationship, you know, and they, they try to rush things or they try to squeeze everything in. It's like, they'll be on the phone and it's like, okay, we have to talk for 12 hours on the phone on our first conversation. That's their attitude. They want to talk for 12 hours. And you cannot build a relationship in 12 hours on the phone. And people don't seem to realize that when you get on the phone like that, you can really push somebody away. Some people just want that romantic fantasy first meeting. And they're so impatient. They're not willing to build. They're not willing to let things just develop. You have to let things develop. And it takes time. Because despite the fact that you may want this fairy tale type introduction and meeting and first date, you know, oh, we was on the phone till three o'clock in the morning. It was so wonderful. And the other person is like, damn, why the fuck we on the goddamn phone so long? You know, and people just simply don't grasp that. Or you got some people that just feel like they have to talk every hour. There has to be a phone conversation. You got to realize when you are dealing with two people, there are two separate lives. There's going to be times that you can talk for long periods and time when you cannot talk. It's just going to be a quick, hey, how you doing? Maybe a 10 or 15 minute conversation, if that. It's all about, all about understanding the other person's life and not trying to automatically be taking trips and going places and doing things. It's about letting the relationship develop. 
The worst thing is to get into a situation to where you're putting yourself in somebody's life. They feel guilty. And now you're going on a trip together. You know, you sort of guilted her into like, okay, yeah, we've been talking. I, okay. I do kind of like you, but you're working my nerves. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Fine. We'll go on the trip together. I was going to go by myself, but come on, let's go. And to find out that she's absolutely miserable the whole time because you're clingy, clingy. You are sort of like pushing yourself in her life. You know, you're positioning yourself in every aspect of her life. And it's like, listen, we've known, only known each other for two weeks. Okay. Now, side note, I will say this. The best way to test a relationship is a road trip. I'm going to tell you something. A road trip. I'm talking about like a seven, eight hour road trip, driving there and driving back. That would test a relationship. But no, but the thing about it is we have to be patient. In relationships, you got to be patient about the fact of actually enjoying the process of getting to know somebody. Have you guys ever been on the phone or talked to somebody and it's like they're asking you every question, every question, because they want to know every single thing. And if you say, like, what did you? Oh, I didn't I didn't really eat yet. Oh, why not? Why, why you don't eat? You no, know, it's like they're trying to learn every single thing in five minutes and you can't because people have different behaviors that they may have in their life. You know, you might have a person that for one week, they may, you know, eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But the next week, it may be like, okay, I got this going. So I'm going to have a lunch. I might have a little, I have a dinner and have a snack. And that's it. I'm not doing breakfast. A lot of people run into a problem because they're so much in an itch to feel like we have this close niche bond. We know each other so well. We're a hundred percent intact. This is the person for me. And they're quizzing them to death. And then the first time something that person does, that's not related to what they thought they knew about the person. Now, all of a sudden, uh, well, you seem different. You're changing. It's like, okay, I did that last week. This week, I'm sort of feeling sort of different. You know, it's not a bad thing. But people seem to get into this situation to where they're so impatient about having a relationship, being in a relationship, that they put the other person in a box because they have created an idea, a movie they have written without consulting the other person of how that person is supposed to do, supposed to say, supposed to act, supposed to behave. One of my pet peeves is when people say, oh, so you seem different. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, you just don't talk the same. You don't sound as happy. Yeah, I'm happy. I mean, but people will do that. They will they will paint this thing like you have to be on cloud nine, jumping over the moon every day. And it's just not possible. Like, I can have a regular monotone conversation and it doesn't mean that I'm not happy. It doesn't mean I'm not enjoying the conversation. If something's funny, I'll laugh. But it doesn't mean that I have to be like, oh my God, how are you? And that's how some people figure a relationship should be. So we have to be patient. Let the process build. That's how you get to know the person. By simply just in taking the simple moments and enjoying each moment that comes and not trying to force moments or force your dream into a reality and expect that person to be able to read your mind and say what you think they should say. Next is our goals. Many of us get into life and we just have this thing to where we're so impatient about the things we want to achieve and we want to accomplish in life. We're so impatient. You know, we say we're going to start a business and all of a sudden we're expecting as soon as we get a name and we get a website, we're expecting like 30,000 people to be knocking down our door. That's what we're expecting. We're expecting that. You know, we, we want to go to school to get a degree. We're expecting it to be quick. We want a job. We're expecting to grow up. To, we're expecting to be rich and be making six figures within six months. We have to learn not to be so impatient and just be patient with the process. Remember the process is teaching you how to succeed. 
Going through the process is going to teach you where you're going to make mistakes. And those mistakes are going to teach you where you can be better. And learning to be better is going to help you stay on the right path. Because you cannot be successful if you are impatient, if you are rushing, if you are making the decision that, oh, no, 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 oh, my God, I'm I, I supposed to do this. It didn't work. So now I got to do this. You don't think things through or you're overthinking things. The people around you are going crazy because they don't understand what's going on. They're trying to calm you down, but you simply won't listen. So then you start bouncing from gold to gold to gold to gold because you're not allowing anything to actually just kind of formulate and fall into place. You're not allowing the process to take place. So you feel like, oh, this is not for me, so I got to go do something else. You're speed talking through everything, and that's what you're doing because you're unable to be focused and remain intact to just keep your will in one place. You know, that's the thing when you watch the John Wick movie. Every villain said the same thing about John Wick. He's a man of focus and he's a man of will. You have to be a person of focus and will and strong will. Because if you're not, you're not going to be able to do the things that you want to do. You're not going to be able to accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish. Relationships are never going to be satisfactory to you. Because you're always going to say, why did I get into this relationship? Because you were impatient. Either you're going to run away from a relationship where a person wanted to take their time and get to know you, or you're going to rush into something with somebody you shouldn't be with. So now you're stuck with this person that you're in a relationship with. Now you're realizing that it was a mistake. But do you blame them? Or do you blame yourself because you were the one that was impatient and wanted to put yourself in your life? Start talking about, well, we're going to go here. We're going to go there. Would you move here? Would you do there? You're talking about all this stuff. And I think we talked about this before, but also we talked about the fact that people saying, I love you. I mean, do you really love somebody that you never met? You never been with face to face. How can you say you love that person and you never met them? You never met them. And I think that's what a lot of people are doing. They're dropping the word love. Simply because a lot of people are hearing someone say the words that they feel they need to hear. It's like, I never had this. So when they hear someone say it, even if it's just on the internet in an email or a text, they start to feel like, wow, this is who I need to be with. This is, this is the person I want to be with. They're speaking to me. And I think a lot of people are just wanting that connection. They're hearing things that they've dreamed of someone saying. They wanted someone to say or do. And they're falling right into it. So what do you do to kind of control your impatience? Because nobody's going to be able to do it for you. As many people as you talk to that comes up to you and say, hey, Chill out a little bit. Relax. Take a step back. A lot of people are un they won't listen. They won't listen to that person. They'll still rush in. They'll still go running in. You have to be able to take a step back and say, you know what? Okay, let, let me let me just get a hold of myself. Because sometimes we get excited about the possibility of something and we forget about the process. Because the possibility just overwhelms us. The possibility of being in love. The possibility of making six figures. The possibility of having that great bond with somebody who you think will be a great friend. The possibility of being a leader or taking your place in a job. The possibility of having a great career. But it all comes with a process. Possibility is one thing. Yes, that means the opportunity is there. But if you are impatient and you're not willing to go through the process, the learning process is going to tell you if it's right or wrong for you. The learning process is going to tell you if it's a good fit or bad fit, if this is where you're meant to be or not to be. So if you're not willing to go through the process and you just start skipping over and getting stuck in some of these crazy situations, that means you need to take a step back. 
check your paint. Everything does not have to be microwave ready. It does not. You have to be mindful of the things you want and what you expect to your life. Yeah. Patience is so key. And patience is the one thing that many people lack that causes them to get into bad and traumatic situations. All right, guys, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more. We'll be back with your host, Reggie, on Simply Straight Talk. Hey, are you looking for some great music, upbeat, and with a positive voice? Well, the song, I Stand With You, is exactly what you need. This timeless song has a pop version sung by Audrey Carmel. And a reggae version sung by General Steele, now known as Revelation. Now I know some days you may feel blue, Lord, trust in your greatness to see you through. These songs are now available on iTunes and other digital platforms for download. Don't miss out. Get your copy today. Give life your best and I know. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome to the second part of the show, man. Listen, today we're talking about impatient behavior and killer instincts. The first part of the show, we talked about impatient behavior. And this part of the show, I want to talk about killer instincts. Now, when we hear killer instincts, one thing we always associate that with is sports. You hear it when you talk, when you hear about Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, you know, those guys had that killer instinct. You hear it when you talk about Tom Brady, when you talk about Peyton Manning. And basically, killer instinct is somebody who's able to take control they don't believe in dying because they believe that i'm gonna fight to the end it's that person that at the end of the game like serena williams that killer instinct venus williams that killer instinct it's a person that has the mindset of i'm fighting for this to the death i want to take the last shot i want to be the deciding factor win or lose give it to me and that is killer instinct how do you apply killer instinct to the average person everyday life outside of athletics it's that person that's willing to work to put in the work if you want to be a great athlete you got to have that killer instinct inside you to put in the work behind the scenes so before you get to big game day You're already in the gym. You're taking those practice shots on the court. You're throwing the football. You're working out. You're mastering the craft or learning the rules and regulations. You're understanding the process of how the game works. It's the same application you have to use in life. You got to understand how the game works to the best of your ability. If you want to be a lawyer, to be the best damn lawyer out there, You got to have that killer instincts, meaning you got to understand each and every aspect of the case. What got the case from the starting point or when the case was initiated in the courts from where the crime was committed to right now? How do you close and seal the deal? A lawyer with that killer instincts is the lawyer that you want standing in front of that judge and speaking to the jury. If you're in litigation on negotiations, you want that lawyer who knows the background of that impo- of that opposing company, that when that lawyer sits in that negotiation room, that they're fighting for you. They know their opponent's weaknesses. They're able to exploit it. You have to look at that in life. You need to know your own weaknesses. You need to know the weaknesses of the career path you're going. If you're working for a company and you know that company has a weakness in 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 a certain area, what is your strength? Can you be that company's strength in that area? 
If you know that they have a serious problems and they need a cultural change, can you write policies and procedures, something that's going to move that corporation to the next level? When you think about it, if you ever watched that show, The Food That Built America, that guy, I think his name was John Kroc, who actually kind of wiggled his way into McDonald's. Look at what he did, with, with, which was a company that the original owners did not think as big as he thought. A killer instinct person thinks big. John Kroc, thought, he thought big. This guy was like, this is how we're going to do it. This is the steps we're taking. Every single step of the process, he involved other people. He had a team around him, but he wanted to taste everything. He was willing to get out and go to every single McDonald's to make sure it was consistent. What is your killer instinct? Do you have that killer instinct about your life? Do you want to start a business? Do you want to, do you want to write a book? Do you want to go into the entertainment business? What is it? But do you have the killer instinct behind it to succeed, to not give up, to not quit? That killer instinct welcomes the process because the process, as we spoke about earlier, about people being impatient, the process is what builds that killer instinct. It was builds that confidence because I've been here. I've done this. I'm not giving up. Do you want to be the person that's ready to take the last shot? And if you lose that game, do you have the killer instinct to come back and say the next game, somebody's going to pay because I'm going to score double. I'm going to do twice as good. If you want to be a baker and you lose a baking competition, are you the type of person to go back Study the ingredients you use, figure out your measurements, the icings you use, the choice of cake you made to cook and bake and prepare. Did you ask, are you the type of person to sit back and say, what the hell went wrong? Because it would not happen again. And you do it again and again and again until you get your measurements, your ingredients, you make changes to your ingredients. And when you come back with that same cake, people are expecting the same results, but you giving them something that they just cannot get enough of. That's that killer instinct. That killer instinct accepts a loss, but sees a loss as a lesson of how to be stronger, better, more powerful. A person with killer instinct wants to master their craft. Are you willing to, to take the time and go through the process to learn and master your craft. That's what made Peyton Manning a great quarterback. This dude mastered the art of defenses, offense, on football. He understood how the game worked. And with that being said, he was able to just rip apart defense and call offensive plays to get around the defense. You have to use that same practice in life. You need to know what your opponents are doing. Study your opponents. That's that killer instinct. You want to start a business? You study it. You learn it. You learn what their practices are, what they're doing. If you're working for a company right now, but you want your own company, take a look in that company. Every day you go to work, try to figure out what works well with this company. What makes this company successful in this area? And what makes this company horrible in that area? Every place I work, I've always observed what makes this company good. What do they do good? What about their leadership? What is their leadership? Is the leadership and mission of this company, you know, on the same page? What can I learn from this company? Even if you don't like where you work at, figure out what is it about this company that works and don't work. You learn from their mistakes and then you turn right around and grow further by building on what works. That's how Burger King was able to kind of catch up with McDonald's back in the day. Because Burger King needed to make some changes. They had to figure out what worked, what didn't work. So the new CEO and president of Burger King, you know what he did? He came from McDonald's. He took those lessons of what worked and what didn't work and used it to Burger King's advantage. 
You have to do that at your opponent. Your opponent is those obstacles that are getting in your way. Those things that come at you. You need that killer instinct in life. That killer instinct is not just about winning. Yes, the goal is to win, but it's understanding and mastering the art of whatever you're doing. You don't accept defeat. You take a loss as a learning lesson. Do you have that killer instinct? Many people have sort of given up because they feel like they've taken so many losses. But like I said earlier, a lot of people have been very impatient in their life and the decisions that they make. And then they end up jumping on a train that was not meant for them. That's why you got to be patient with the process. You need to have that killer instinct. Allow the process of life to go and let it work. You need to endure the process. You may want it in three, in three months, but the process says this is going to take a year. You need that year. That year is going to help you to develop your killer instinct. And that's how a lot of people get their killer instinct. By going through the process, going through the hardships, going through the letdowns and learning because it builds your confidence. Killer instinct is confidence. It's confidence in the fact that I believe in myself. I know I can do this. I'm willing to stand against the opposition. I'm willing to walk into this meeting. I'm willing to take this test. I'm willing to study and learn. If I need to take an extra month, I'll take an extra month. But I'm willing to do whatever I have to do in a reasonable and logical, strategic way to win. But you got to be willing to take the hits. You got to be willing to fall down. And then you got to be willing to analyze, why did I fall? What happened? How did I slip up? What happened right here? You got to be willing to look back at your notes and say, crap, I fell. Okay, what happened? The biggest mistake a lot of people make, they don't go back and look at why they fail. They don't go back and look at what went wrong. They're so busy trying to see what worked. Okay, well, let's just stick with what works. No, look at what went wrong. Look at what caused you to fall. You need to understand that. Because if you don't do that, then you'll never get past the next hurdle. It is not a one-way thing. It is not like, okay, well, I did it this way. This seems to be work. It seems to be progressing. I seem to be staying stable. Okay, this is good. But do you want to stay stable or do you want to elevate? Do you want to be number one? Or do you just want to stay at the bottom of the pile, making the minimum, being the minimum? Or do you want to be higher? Do you want to set the standard? That's the killer instinct mentality. You want to set the standard. You don't want to be following other people's standard. You want to be the standard. And you can't do it unless you're willing to analyze and understand what happened right here. What mistake did I make? Did I network with the wrong people? Did I move too fast? Did I not put enough research in? Was my research in the right area? Did I apply every step that I should have applied? What did I do wrong? You got to understand what you did wrong. People with that killer instinct want to know where they messed up. That's important to them because that means they're not going to repeat it. And number two, it's going to make them better. It's going to make them fierce, make them powerful. So do you have and want that killer instinct? You have to make that decision. That decision comes with going through the process, the good and the bad. Hey guys, we'll be back. I'm gonna come right back with the final words. Y'all stay tuned right here to the Simply Straight Talk Show. You're listening to Simply Straight Talk. Hey, we all know that Atlanta, Georgia is a big city and sometimes you might need just a little bit of help. But you know what? That's why we have Legs Concierge Services. Are you looking for someone to help you with errands, event planning, dog walking, organizing, 
shopping, or maybe you're in need of a personal assistant, then you need to contact Legs Concierge Services, operating in Atlanta, Georgia. For more information on these and additional services, contact rarmstrong105 at gmail.com. That's R-A-R-M-S-T-R-O-N-G-105 at gmail.com. Remember, time is precious, so let Les Concierge Services help you enjoy it so much better. Simply Straight Talk. It's that time. Reggie is about to break this conversation down. Hey everybody, and welcome back for the final words of today's show. Today we talked about impatient behavior and killer instincts. I think the two go hand in hand, but most importantly, it's the process. I think a lot of us really don't want to endure the process of what it takes to reach our goals and to accomplish the things we want to accomplish in life, be it relationships, be it friendships, our careers, our goals, starting new jobs, going back to school, starting a business. It's very difficult because we all want something. Some of us have family members that we want to provide for and be there for. Others of us, let me get it out, uh, we want to do it for ourselves. You know, we want to feel like we accomplished, we did something in life. We want to feel connected. Every human being wants to feel connected and they want to feel like they've given something, they've done something. So the process is a big part of everything that we are going to encounter in life. Everything we want to do, there's going to be a process. Sometimes the process is going to be quick. Sometimes the process is going to be long, but every aspect of the process requires us to really just learn, 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 even when it comes to the simple things, things we think we know, always be willing to learn something new. Be open and receptive to what is to come. And don't just assume that everything is going to be quick and easy. Everything, like I said earlier, is not going to be just microwave ready. Life requires us to grow. And growth requires a process. And in that process, we learn. There we go again. Process, learn, growth, those things are essential to you being who you want to be in life, despite what people say around you. It's all a part of having that killer instinct. It builds that killer instinct because you get that confidence that when you know you can follow a process all the way through to the end, it helps develop you a stronger mentality, a stronger mind, a stronger will, focus. That's what it's about. But if you want to do that, then you have to learn to really just see and recognize your flaws, recognize your weaknesses, how you can improve on them, but also recognizing too the weaknesses and sort of the things of the opposition, the things that you are facing and how you can be better, how you can grow from that. Impatient behavior can set you back so much. It can make you just feel like you're at your wit's end. It can make you feel like you just made so many mistakes that you can't get back up. But that's why you got to have that killer instinct that you just keep learning and growing and fighting and you don't give up. That is a part of life. That is a part of this whole thing that we're doing today to be better. Because you know you have things you want in life. You know there are things you want to accomplish. I want you to focus on learning about you, your flaws and your mistakes and be willing to accept the fact that I can, if I don't go through the process, then I'm not going to get the fullness of this. Go through the process so you can be the best you can be. You can get your goals. You can have that satisfaction. You can have that feeling of accomplishment. And the only way to do that is to simply go through it. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. Don't let people try to get you to cheat your way through the process because you won't get the full experience. You get the full experience by doing it, going through it. You become stronger. You become better, better, harder, confident because this is your life. 
This is your chance. No one can do your process for you. But I need you to do it. I need you to sit back, be patient. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself down. When you fall, why did I fall? Okay, mental note, paper note, whatever it takes. Take a note and jot it down so you remember when you come across that road again, how to cross that hurdle. Okay, I did this the last time. Let me make some changes. Be flexible. But don't give up. Don't assume that you're at your end when you're not. This is your chance. Hey, guys, that's all for the show today, man. Thank you for checking out the Simply Straight Talk show. And I will see you next Friday. That's it for this week's episode of the Simply Straight Talk podcast. Be sure to sign up to our email list at simplystraighttalk.com and follow us in your favorite podcast app so that you don't miss our next episode. Wishing you a wonderful day from the Simply Straight Talk crew. Simply Straight Talk with your host Reggie B. Come on, let's all join in. Your choice all right here. Oh, simply straight, simply straight talk.